Welcome to another Photoshop tutorial. In this video, we will recover this unexposed landscape image and turn it into this. If you want to follow along this tutorial, as always, you can find the link to the raw file in the description of the video. And now let's begin. Here we are in the camera raw editor and I first planned this as an HDR image, but I soon realized I can recover all the details I need from a single image because the raw files are just that powerful nowadays. With that being said, the first thing I want to do is to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Landscape. This will not only give the image some more saturation, but also recover details from the shadows already as you can see. Now let's go through the basic stuff and fix the exposure first. For the white balance, I'd like to raise the temperature, giving it a way warmer look. This is looking pretty good. I like the warmer tones in the sky, makes it look like a really nice sunset. Then the first thing we can do to recover the shadows is to simply push up the exposure and we can raise it quite a bit. Just like that maybe. Now the foreground is really nicely exposed, but of course we get overexposure in the sky which is not really that nice. To fix that I'm going to bring down the highlights and thus you can see we get back details in the clouds, which is exactly what we want. That's looking pretty good. Now let's further bring up the shadows and maybe even the blacks and that should fix the underexposed areas. You can see when looking at the histogram there's no more underexposure and also no more overexposure. So that's pretty good. However due to those changes we did lose a lot of contrast. You could play around with the slider somewhat to get back contrast but I do prefer to do it with local adjustments just to have more control over the areas where I'm applying the contrast. So let's head into the masking menu and first off I want to start by changing the sky. So I'm using a linear gradient, add a rather big one just like that, aligned with the darker clouds on top of it and in here I'm going to drop the exposure just a little bit and let's also raise the contrast. So we get some more details in that structure in the clouds. All right, that looks good. The upper part is a little too warm maybe, so I do want to bring down the temperature slightly. All right, now let's add another linear gradient right away. And I'm creating a smaller one at the very top part of the sky, just like that. And again, I do want to introduce some contrast just to make the clouds a bit more interesting up there. And I can also make this area darker by bringing down the shadows. Okay. Then I do want to work on the foreground. So let's use another linear gradient. And I guess I'm just dragging it up like this. Maybe a little higher. All right. So in here, I do want to also increase the contrast by making the bright parts a lot brighter. So let's raise the highlights. I'm going to raise them all the way up. And at the same time, I do want to drop the shadows. Just like that. And then maybe add some contrast. All right, contrast wise, this is looking pretty good, but I also want to add some sharpness to that field in the foreground. So let's bring up the texture. And let's also bring up the clarity a notch. Perfect. Then let me see. I do think I want to add some light bloom effect just around that bright spot behind the tree. And for this reason I'm using a small radial gradient. Maybe like this, rotate it a bit to fit the light in the back. And in here I'm raising the blacks. I am also raising the saturation because we can add some color to this area this way. And then let's drop the dehaze very very carefully. That's looking really good. We can enhance this some more by using another radial gradient. This time I'm creating a bigger one, just slightly bigger like this. And in here I just want to bring down the dehaze, just like that. And you can see that light bloom effect looks really, really good in here. All right, then what can we do next? I think I want to further work on the foreground. So let me create another linear gradient. Actually, no, let me create a sky selection. And now I'm inverting this selection to select the landscape in the foreground like that. Here we do have some 
parts of the sky is still selected so I'm going to subtract with the brush tool and just brush over the sky up here. Just like that. Okay. So with that landscape selected I want to raise the whites. Let's raise them quite a bit. Just like that. Nice. I do think I want to add another landscape selection so again let's create a sky mask. Then I am inverting it again, use subtract with the brush and I'm just brushing over everything up here, including that tree. Also I'm going to subtract the linear gradient from the near foreground because I don't want to change that area. Uh, let's see, maybe like this. And in here let's further raise the highlights, some more contrast and increase the whites. All right, that's looking really good. Finally, I do want to create another sky selection. This time, however, I do want to use it for the sky in here. I just want to slightly drop the temperature. Okay, that's looking a bit more natural than before. And that's it for the local adjustments. Now let's compare this image to before. You can see we have recovered all the details we need very nicely, especially in the field in the foreground. We also have a lot of details in the tree and in the clouds without too much over or under exposure. So that's really good already. Let's do a little bit of color grading starting in the color mixer. Here I do want to bring up the orange saturation a tiny bit. And I also want to bring up the blue saturation, just like that. All right. Next I'm heading into the color grading panel to do the split toning and as always I'm starting with the highlights, adding a warm color tone somewhere in that range with a lot of saturation because that fits the sunset nicely. Okay, let's head over to the midtones. Again I want to use a warmer color tone, bring up the saturation some more. All right. Then let's head over to the shadows. Here, of course, I'm going with a cold color tone and a rather low saturation, just like that. Now, I'm not sure if I'm happy with the split toning already, so I'm trying different blending types. Let's drop the blending a bit, which just weakens the split toning effect. Also, we can play around with the balance. Going to the right gives the highlights just the stronger split toning. All right, that looks pretty good. Then finally, let me sharpen this image in the details tab, bring down the radius, increase the detail, add some masking and add some sharpening. And here we have the image after the raw adjustments. You can see it's almost done. There's just some more tiny things to do in Photoshop. So let's do that. First off, I'm not happy with the horizon. I do want to clean this up a little bit and then use the clone stem tool to have a straight horizon especially there on the right side because right now it looks a bit strange so let's do just that i'm duplicating that layer in case i mess something up so let's hit ctrl j use the spot healing brush and then clean up the image All right, looking closely at the area, you might see some repeating patterns in here, but I think zoomed out, it's such a small area, it won't be noticed if you don't know there's anything changed in here. So that should be fine. Next up, let's add a little more glow to this image. Therefore, I'm creating a new layer, switch the blending mode to hard light, grab the brush by pressing B, and let's bring down the brush opacity. And as you can see, as a foreground color, I have a very warm color tone. We could go a little more into the orange range. All right. And now with a very soft brush, I'm painting in some more glow around that bright spot. All right, that should be enough. Then next up, I do want to further work on the foreground and dodge the highlights. So let's create a new layer again. This time, let's go with the overlay blending mode. And for the dodging, as usual, I'm using the TK panel plugin. And with those lights masks, I can specifically target the foreground, just like that, as you can see. So let's create a layer mask with the lights 2 mask. 
on our overlay layer. Then again I'm using that warm color tone from before with a higher brush opacity. And now I'm just carefully painting in on the foreground like that. And thus we can just slightly brighten up the foreground. We could maybe make the foreground color a bit brighter, but I don't want to overdo it. I think it looks good this way. So at this point, let's merge all those layers. So I'm going to select them all and hit Ctrl E. And now I want to use the spot healing brush and just fill a few of those gaps in the tree branches because they are a little distracting. Just like that. And I guess that's it for restoring this a little underexposed single raw file. I hope this was an interesting tutorial. If you have any questions left, feel free to ask in the comments and thank you very much for watching this video.